Good morning, good morning, everyone. We are back today with another episode of the Family Entrepreneur Life Live Show. And today I am so very excited and honored to introduce you or reintroduce you, <laughs> my good friend, Christine McAllister. Um, and actually, Christine was has already been on the show. Technically, she was our very first guest, but we had a tech issue, so we weren't actually able to go live. And Christine was such a trooper that she just went live on her own and I was like frantically typing questions into the comment box while she was live in the group. So thank you. Thank you, Christine, for coming on again this time as a guest expert. And if you guys haven't seen Christine around, she is a business and success coach and expert on turning tragedy into triumph. Her company, Life with Passion, helps high achieving motivated women quit and stay out of their nine to five jobs by creating and growing online businesses out of their passions. Christine, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much, Ariana. I'm so happy to be here. Yay, we're so happy to have you. Why don't you, for anyone who hasn't met you or seen you around, fill in the gap a little bit. Tell us your family dynamic and some of your backstory because you have done so many interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I have been an entrepreneur um, starting as a side hustler and then moving into full-time entrepreneurship for 12 years now. I always knew that I wanted to start my own thing and I was the kid with a pet sitting business, etc. because I love animals. And I uh, I am the mother of a 14 month old as of today. Um, and I also am the mother of an angel named Maeve who would be two and a half right now. And she was the inspiration for starting Life with Passion, um, which you heard a little bit about what I do. I'm helping women around the world. And I've also started an online marketing company. I breed Arabian horses. Uh, my background's in broadcast, film, and documentary production, so I've worked at the Olympics three times, have a nonprofit in Maeve's honor, so I do a lot of different things. <laughs> See, I told you guys. <laughs> it's a super interesting story. <laughs> I was not holding back. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I, I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I live here with my husband and my daughter and our two rescue dogs, and uh, I'm, I have my horses close by. I love it. I love when you post a picture of your horses because it makes me miss it makes me miss it so much that I'm like, one day I'm going to go back and volunteer at the place that I used to work and they had a farm and they had rescue horses. And I just I loved going to work every day and being outside with the horses. And, you know, we had other farm animals, but the horses and the potbelly pigs were my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Right. <laughs> uh, so, Christine, tell us how you kind of have evolved over time into what you're doing now. Because, I mean, you just mentioned a lot of different things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So I studied communications um, undergrad and in graduate school, and I was planning to go into film and to move to L.A. or D.C. and work either in the L.A. film industry or at National Geographic Discovery. That was my path. Um, when I... Uh, was in my last semester of grad school, my alma mater uh, dean called me up and said, hey, would you consider coming back to teach for us? And I was 23. Uh, and I was like, this is not my plan. Like, <laughs> nowhere on my radar. But I realized that it was also going to allow me to have a life, right? Uh, which we all know is so important, as opposed to what I knew I would be doing if I went into film, which is working 20 hours a day, continuing to live like a broke college student and not having anything else. I knew I could do it. I just I wasn't convinced that it was what I wanted to do at that time. So I took the opportunity to learn, you know, have have a little bit of a life. I became a professor at age 23. I got my first horse, uh, which was a total dream come true. And then um, over the next several years, as I was in a nine to five, I became a career counselor. Um, and so when I finally quit my job, which is what I always knew I wanted to do, um, I started an online marketing business and I helped um, mainly horse farms. That was my big niche to bring in leads, uh, create a professional online presence. I created the biggest 
Facebook page in the world for a horse farm and just put out quality professional content, basically being a marketing director for these small businesses that didn't have the need for a full-time marketing director. So I traveled and I loved and I did that and worked with everybody remotely. Um, and then in 2015, when my world kind of got turned upside down with the sudden loss of my daughter, Maeve, um, she was stillborn at full term, um, totally unexpectedly. That caused me to do some pretty deep soul searching in the midst of that grief. And I had had this feeling for a while that the online marketing thing, while I was really good at it, and I was totally booked and I never had to advertise like I was good at it but it wasn't the end all be all thing for me, right? Like I knew there was another level, but I was also comfortable. Yeah. Well, when that comfort got totally destroyed, um, when I lost Maeve, I started really asking the questions openly, like what what is next for me? What's my thing? What's my next level? And I hired a coach to help me figure that out. And what I discovered in that process was that I really, really was always trying to convince the people in my life to become entrepreneurs, <laughs> especially the women. Like I was just like, this is the path for everyone, right? Because it's my passion. And I was kind of a lot of times talking to people who really didn't want to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. But I was so passionate about it. And I realized that that's what I wanted to do all the time is help other women sort of to be the person that I didn't have, because for a lot of years, I really struggled in a job I didn't feel like was right for me. And it was really tough. And I wanted to help other women have that plan. You know, I was surrounded by a lot of male entrepreneurs mm -hmm. when I was in my 20s and looking and going, how do I do, you know? And, um, and so while they were great, it wasn't quite the same, right? It was a different dynamic. And I became the person that, um, that could help other women quit their jobs, stay out of their jobs, build businesses, like get getting over the self doubt that so many of mm. us have and also um, simplifying things. Cause this online space is so crazy. It's so noisy. It's so overwhelming. And those are kind of my specialties. And so um, life with passion exists to help, help women grow their businesses. And I really believe that um, as we know, women are so, so multi capable, so amazing. We do so many different things, right? It would take 10 people to replace all the things that one of us. <laughs> and um, so much so the backbone of, of families, right? So the more women I can empower, whether they're single, whether they're married, whether they have kids, whether they don't, I believe that's the, the quickest way to help the world become, um, you know, the place that we all dream of it being. And I also have discovered in this process that it's brought about or brought back, I would say, the real me, mm. like this person who kind of hid behind people pleasing and a fear of failure and all that stuff for a lot of years. Me kind of owning my zone of genius has then um, not only done that for myself, but helped other women to be inspired to do the same. Yeah, I love I love that you say that. Number one, totally agree with you <laughs> that women are the behind the scene brains of the operation because <laughs> do you know how many times I've like looked at Tom and been like, what would you do if I was gone for like two weeks? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> You should try it sometime, though. That I would should be totally try it sometime. Like, <laughs> see you later. I didn't schedule anything. <laughs> right. I love you. I love you. No offense, Tom, but we all know it's true. Yeah. And then that second piece you said about um, finding identity or refinding our identities. Yeah. So hits home for me. Um, a lot of you, if you're watching and you've heard our story, know that I am not the true entrepreneur of the Tom and Ariana duo. Um, I've been kind of tagging along since we started about 10 years ago, just helping out in the background. Um, when we started the offline businesses, I was just doing like admin um, office type management stuff. And I was totally fine with that. I'm organized. I can handle things. And when we jumped into the online world, people were attracted to us because we were a couple. And so it was like, well, we have to do this together. But I went through a very dark time in my life where I lost who I was completely lost it. We, I didn't know. Um, I didn't even 
know who I was for a time. Um, after we had our son, I went through like a mom zombie phase mm -hmm. and I just felt exhausted and tired and he was sick all the time and I was sick all the time. Um, Tom was at the time had a traveling consultant gig. So he was gone Mondays through Thursday evenings every single week. And I was home with the two kids and was supposed to be doing like all of the business stuff while he was gone. And we didn't have daycare. So the baby was home with me and I was just miserable. I mean, I didn't work was like the absolute last thing on my mind. I was unhappy, didn't like where we were. And uh, I started to kind of find that a little bit more after we had a heart to heart and he realized how miserable I was because as you said, we're very good at hiding that stuff. You know, we're supposed to be good at keeping the family together. We're supposed to be good at keeping the house together. We're supposed to be happy, fine, everything's cool. And, and I wasn't, but I wasn't showing that. And so when I did, he was like, oh, okay, what do we, what do we do? Uh, and I was like, I don't know, but I can't be home with the kids anymore. Like that was my breaking point. I said, if I have to be doing work, mm -hmm. I need to be alone, be able to focus. And I can't do that right now. Um, so once we kind of like hit our steps with the kids being at daycare and me jumping back into the work, then it was like a whole nother six months until I found myself in the online space because it's so very different mm -hmm. when you are in front of people, when you're trying to become the expert and the go-to person. And I wasn't comfortable with that. I wasn't comfortable with the space we were in um, until this year when we finally figured out what space that was that I was comfortable in. And that was with the family space. And now it's like, you know, I feel like a brand new person. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been so, so enlightening for me to hear other people say that same thing. Like, oh, when I first met you, you were so quiet. You would follow Tom around like when we were at conferences and stuff. They were like, yeah, you know, you kind of always deferred to Tom and we're always kind of looking to him to see what you should say or what the answers would be. Or you were kind of off on your own. And now I probably I think the last conference we went to, I met more people than he did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so it's, you know, like you said, I've come back into my own. And I think that is so powerful for other women to be able to have the ability to do that. And especially while they're making an income at the same time. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. So I've got a question for you. Okay. What is, um, or what are, I should say, what are some of the biggest things that you've seen people struggle with when they are trying to get started in the online business space and their goal, their end goal is to leave their job? Yeah. Okay. So if you're still in a job mm -hmm. and you're starting on the side, um, I would say number one is, <clears throat> feeling totally overwhelmed and not knowing where to start. Um, number two is self-doubt mm. because um, we look around and we say, oh, well, it's too late. There are so many people already doing what I'm doing. It's not possible for me. Um, I don't know how to do this. I need to go get qualifications first. I need to go get certifications. I need to register. I need to have an LLC. I need to do all these external things. Mm -hmm. Not the perfect website. I don't have this. I don't know what to offer. I can't charge enough. Like all of these reasons why not, right? Come flooding in. And the women I work with are super capable, right? Like whatever they've done in a job, they've excelled at it. You know, they were geeks like me in high school with a great <laughs> GPA and getting the scholarships. And like, you know, what I found is that when I, after I left school, which was super structured, I lost, I felt like I didn't have the path anymore, right? Because mm. that was like laid out for me. And then I got a job because that's what you're supposed to do. But it wasn't what I wanted to do. It was what I've been trained to do. Yes. You know, and so <clears throat> in that job going, this isn't what I meant to do, but I don't know what else to do because I haven't learned it. And so I think that's what I see in so many of the women in my community and my clients is like, I just don't know what to do. If someone for the love, if someone would just tell me what the heck to do, like, <laughs> do it already. Right. And so we need that clear plan to cut through all the overwhelm, to do, to get visible to learn how to do sales in a way that feels good for us and not gross and car sales manny, right? Mm -hmm. And we also need the support and, account support and accountability to follow through so that when we have the self-doubt, we're not like, yeah, I'm going to be over here on the couch binge watching Netflix, right? <laughs> 
And I'm like looking at your wine bottles in the background and like with a glass of wine. With right? a glass of wine. <laughs> like wine and chocolate chips. Like, oh. right, you know, one in each hand. So like <clears throat> those are the two things. It takes both like radical simplification, mm. right? Um, uh, instead of like, well, maybe this is the thing and maybe this is the thing. I need to be on this platform and this platform and this platform because these experts are saying and my Facebook news feed is totally cluttered with all the ads. So I just yeah. like, everyone and I hope I put something together. <laughs> but you have 200 emails in your inbox from all right. the people that you've opted into their lists. <laughs> exactly. And you probably don't open 90% of them, right? Because it's just too overwhelming and your brain is like, ah! <laughs> don't get started. Or if you do, you put one post out there and you're like, oh, no, I didn't immediately book up with clients. Like all these people said that they did. So I'm a failure, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that, it's that like lack of consistency, the lack of visibility and the lack of like a clear plan that's going to work for them that they can work and show up for. And honestly, I mean, this is true for me. I know it's true for so many other people too. Someone to kick their butt a little bit, <laughs> right? Like, and just be like, look, you're saying you want this. And yet you're over on the couch all the time, right? Mm -hmm. so the way you can get more confident is by taking a little bit of action, not yeah. by waiting to feel confident, right? And so <clears throat> that's, I love like being in that space, helping those women because it is so possible, but most of the time they're just telling themselves why it's not and trying to talk themselves out of like having these dreams because they're scared. Yeah. Yeah, it is scary. Mm -hmm. It's so scary. Um, but I like that there's three things that you said that I just want to call back out for anyone who's who's watching or who's catching the replay. Keep it simple. Have a plan and take some action. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the basis of starting your business online is, you know, what are you what are you aiming for? What are you trying to achieve? Get a simple, simple plan of action out there. What do I need to do to get it to the next step to, towards that goal? And then actually take some action on it. And I, you know, I don't want anyone to say, oh, well, it's easy to say that because, you know, you guys have done it and and it's it's so much easier for you because you know these things. And that's just simply not not true that not everyone out there knows what they're doing. <laughs> but we're pushing through the fear. And we're taking the action. And then, you know what? It's as simple of testing. Hey, what works? What doesn't work? I'm going to do more of what works. I'm going to stop doing yeah. the things that don't work. Yeah. You know, and yeah. honestly, it's it is scary. It's, it's scary to put yourself out there. But you have to know that it's not as bad as you think it is. You know, even if you get that one person that comments and says, hmm, I kind of wasn't I didn't really like this. But then you might have five other people who are like, yeah, this is awesome. Great job. You just got to kind of understand that it's the Internet and there's going to be people at some point in your space online that are going to say things that you don't agree with or that are going to give you feedback that maybe you don't like. But that's that's life, you know, and, and you have a job. Your boss tells you stuff you don't like all the time. So it's just sim it's just a similar concept in a different space. You know, you just got to kind of say, this is what I want. I'm going to go for it. And I don't care what anyone thinks about me or says about me. This is my life and I'm going to do it my way. Mm, yeah. And I want to read, I just want to catch a comment on here because um, we've got Joanne watching. Hi, Joanne. And, uh, she says, I'm really glad I was able to catch you both live. Very interesting conversation. She's greeting us from the UK and she resonates with the fear and self-sabotage. Um, she likes the keep it simple advice because there is so much noise out there that it's easy to get derailed. Yes. Yes. So easy. So <laughs> there's so much stuff everywhere. <laughs> I'm always like so far behind the curve because I'm like, you know what? I can't even the new things that come out. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to concern myself with those until it's necessary for my business because yeah. it's so easy to get caught up in like the new trends and the new marketing apps and all yep. of the stuff out there when in reality, it's not how you it's not how you market. It's knowing who you're marketing to oh and what they're going to what they're going to resonate with. You yeah. Know? And OK, so if you are not an early adopter, right, of technology, then your people aren't either. <laughs> you know, just Gary says Snapchat is the new thing does not mean you need to move all of your efforts to Snapchat, exactly. right? Exactly. Like, I have a couple of friends who 
I Snapchat with because that's the only way that they communicate. That's all I do on Snapchat. <laughs> I'm not moving my business over to Snapchat because guess what? My people aren't over there either, right? So I think like it's it's never, <clears throat> I remember when I was in school and I'm not a real techie person, you know, which is ironic because I did online <laughs> marketing, right? But it's it proves the point that you don't need to be a graphic designer to run a six figure online marketing business. Yeah. <laughs> if you, you know, you know your skills and you own those. <clears throat> but I was really overwhelmed because in my major, a lot of the people were guys and they were really into the technology, right? Like they had their own fancy cameras and they were like mm -hmm. really good and editors and, you know, total nerds with the tech. And I was like, that's not me. Does that mean I'm not meant for this storytelling, you know, for this, this um, role for this major that I was so passionate about. And one of my professors told me, Christine, it is never going to be about the tool. Like it always comes back to being able to tell a good story. Yeah. And so the tools are transferable. And the same thing is true online. Like if you are really into video and you want to do Facebook Live, great. If you don't, don't do it just because <laughs> everybody says it's a new hot thing. You write yeah. because your people are readers and writers, you know, and like give yourself that permission to keep it simple, to choose one platform, that's where your people are. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think it's it's funny too because you talked about like how they were so put together and they had the nice video recording equipment and the, and the editing and everything looks so polished. And according to recent trends and, and articles everywhere online, people are moving away from that because when you do everything too well, people don't see you as an actual person. So they don't connect. There's no deeper connection. Whereas if you go live and your kid pops into the, the live behind you or the dog starts barking or your tech just stops working and you've got to like cut it and come back and you're like, oh, so sorry. People are attracted to people. Yep. So when you have mistakes in your in your text, which I am a, a huge grammar freak. So Tom drives me nuts because <laughs> he types so fast that he like never checks over his posts for grammar. But they actually say that that's not a bad thing, because as you're typing and you're making mistakes, people are even connecting with those little mm -hmm. tiny mistakes of like, oh, see, they don't type perfectly all the time either. So I think it's important to think about that. You don't have to be perfect your audience and the people that are going to connect with you are going to connect with you regardless because they see you as a person and they are attracted to you and the things that you say and the message that you have. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you don't have to be polished. You don't have to be perfect. Just, just do it. Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> as, as I say, because I normally in these have like t-shirts on <laughs> today, I actually have real like non comfy clothes, which is amazing. <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah. But you know what? It's both, right? Like <clears throat> have time to curl. Like I like to have my hair curled on camera. You have beautiful curly hair anyway. Yeah, right? I don't. Like, I just have to shower and I'm like, voila. <laughs> but you know what? Like I'm going to show up even if I don't have time to curl my hair, you know? Oh yeah, totally. So it's like it's both and people know that. And um, I think that being able to be the person who looks different than maybe your professional headshot, but also be the person who looks like your professional headshot some of the time. Yeah, it's just life. Yeah. Well, and I yeah, like, too, like to like to yeah, to show all the parts of you. So sure, I have a professional headshot. Right. And depending on what I'm sending who I'm sending it to, sometimes it's the more professional looking one and other times it's a little bit less. Like it's still a nice photo, but it's me smiling and I'm kind of like standing funny and I'm outside, so it's kind of more fun. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well depending on what I'm doing or where we're sending the headshots, we can choose like, do we want to show the super uber professional headshot with this one? Or is it the more fun loving, more of our personality? And yeah. I think that's, you get to choose that when you have your own business. You can be whoever you want to be and you can make your business whatever you want to make it. And that's, that's the message that you have to listen to throughout all of the noise, I think. And it's, it's hard because it's really loud noise. But if you can stick to that message and you are attracted to the people who are telling you that, mm -hmm. you will be just fine. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> and I finally, you know, finally learned that myself after a rough, 
a rough year on online business, but I think that's it's it's a trap that's hard not to fall into sometimes. And no one was talking about it, you know, a couple years ago. Now it's a more prevalent message that you hear people like you and I. I've had, you know, conversations with a lot of people all over that are moving more towards the authenticity, towards the integrity, towards real, you know, not talking about everything as if it's this high level thing that no one else can achieve. It's okay, no, this is where I started and you're kind of back where I started and this is where I am now. So you can do that too. Exactly. Yep. All right. So (laughs) now that we've, now that we've chatted a little bit about some of the pitfalls that people go through in the transition, what are some of the things that you've seen people struggle with when they have successfully left their job and are maybe like three to six months in? Okay. So one of the first things that I notice is once you've quit your job, um, a lot of times you might like feel really freaked out about what do I do now? (laughs) If you've been side hustling, then suddenly you have all this time and it's kind of like, you know, a task takes the amount of time that you give it. And so what do I do with my whole day? (laughs) Now I could do all of these things. And again, the overwhelm comes in. So it's about learning to prioritize, but also giving yourself permission that it doesn't mean working every, it doesn't have to mean working every single second you used to be in the nine to five, eight to five, whatever. So like for me, for instance, I can knock out, if I have um, a couple of hours in the morning, I can knock out an entire day's worth of work um, because that's my productive time, mm. right? So I've learned that and I protect that time as much as I can. Now I have a 14 month old, so that changes. <laughs> Like just to be transparent, she's sick today. And so, you know, she goes to preschool two days a week and she couldn't go today. So last yeah. night I'm like, oh, I have a center here. Yeah. <laughs> so like my mother-in-law is watching her today, which is wonderful and beautiful. I have coaching calls today and other things going on, you know? And um, but you know, it's it's if you have kids, you know this. A lot of times, like I'm a very structured, organized person. I like a plan, you know, and a kid uh, throws all that out the window. <laughs> So, the, the anti, anti of oh, anti plan, right? Um, and so it's you know my parents are coming in tonight. Like I haven't gotten their bedroom ready yet. Whatever. Like it's just it's life. But I think we can choose to freak out about it, which I would have done in the past, or be like, cool, I've got today taken care of. Like she might have a fever, and I might not know what the weekend or next week is going to look like, but I've got today taken care of, and I can show up and be fully present here. And so I think that instead of projecting. When you first get out of your job or you're a few months out or you know, maybe even a little longer out, projecting what the next things are going to look like and again projecting like doom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it is creating some like very simple. How do I start my day? How do I happen to my day? Right. Instead of like letting everything react, you know, mm-hmm. onto me practices that set you up for success. And we could talk a lot about productivity. We could talk a lot about planning. I know you're a super expert in that. Um, But I would say the biggest thing is to be willing to take a look at what's working, right? Take a look at what's working. A lot of times when we've gotten our first or our first few clients, we just are not even really aware of where they came from. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're not even going back to focus on, oh, I got that by connecting here, or by showing up here, or by sending personal emails or whatever. We're like, but I need to do this because someone said I need to do it. I need to do this because someone said I do it. And I think when we're when we're first building our business, that's where a lot of the stress comes in. And it doesn't need to because yeah. you don't have to have a website to get clients. No, <laughs> no? you don't have to have any particular tool. Online is still about connecting and being authentic and having a program that's priced in a way that you can say the price without throwing up, (laughs) being willing to follow up with real people, being willing to offer what you have to offer and being willing to stick with that for at least 90 days with like a particular Mm -hmm. strategy. So if you're three months out and you're freaking the freak out because you are not where you thought you were going to be, have you been doing one thing for 90 days? Mm -hmm. You know, because then what you started doing when you quit is the sort of the fruit that you're going to be reaping 
at the three month mark, right? Or like at the six month mark, how consistent have you been? Or are you changing up your strategy every week? Yeah. Um, that's such a big one. And then also, what kind of support and accountability do you have around you? Are you showing up somewhere in an online space um, where people are super encouraging, where people get you? Or are you going to your spouse or your friends who are in nine to five jobs and miserable and asking them for advice on how to grow your online business? <laughs> Right. Because they might be the people that you love the most, but they are not the people to ask for advice because you don't want to go back to a nine to five. So why are you letting them tell you, you know, this is what you should do? They don't know. And also they don't have the mindset of an entrepreneur. It doesn't mean they're bad people. But like, I think that's often where a lot of women get really confused and overwhelmed. They don't feel supported by the people like physically in their life, like really close to them who aren't on the same path or someone says something that feels discouraging. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're like, oh, I gotta go back and get a job, right? No, the truth is, it's about surrounding yourself, whatever that means, um, hiring a coach, right? Getting some accountability, finding a mentor, joining a Facebook group, whatever it is, to keep showing up. Yeah. Because that persistency and consistency is the thing that leads to success. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think uh, in a theme that we've we've seen reoccurring just in our time online is the support and the accountability are two of the most important pieces um, in the online space. Uh, but I do want to say that it is it's now there are tons and tons and tons of Facebook groups about being an entrepreneur. And, you know, it's very easy to jump into a group and to like be loving on the vibe and to find people in there to support you. But what I want to make sure people think about too, is you have to find people who are going to support you by asking you the hard questions as well mm -hmm. and not just being the cheerleader. Cause that's another trap to fall into is when everyone's like, yeah, you're doing great. Good job. But if you're, if you're not get hitting your goals, if you're not being consistent and doing the right things, you also want somebody to point that out to you so that you don't keep going down that wrong path. Now, whether that's a coach or just an accountability partner, somebody you find that you know is going to tell you the truth, even though it's the hard truth. Um, if you can find that person, it'll be so helpful for you because um, I found that a lot myself. I'm a very practical logical person. So mm -hmm. while I do love support and the cheerleading and, you know, everyone being there for you and like cheering you on and saying, you're doing great. I also really love it when people are like, uh, why are you doing that? You don't right. need to do that because right. then I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Maybe I should reevaluate and make sure that I'm doing the right things that to, to get me to the place I want to be. Yeah. Um, because it is easy to kind of fall off the, the wagon sometimes when you have left your job and you have all the time in the day to be working on those different things. It's easy to get those little like, you know, they call it the FOMO, the fear of missing out. Totally. Like, oh, right. that person, everyone in the group is signing up for this new app. I should totally yeah. sign up for it. And then everyone cheers you on when you do. Instead of being like, huh, all right, everyone's signing up for this. Let me, I'll look into it, but then make sure you're evaluating if it's actually the right thing for you and being like, all right, guys, I'm glad you found something, but I'm not going to jump in at this time Yeah, because yeah. Um, I've seen it happen so, so many times and I've seen so many people spend so much money because they're doing the cool thing that everyone else is doing. Like, oh, this new course came out. Everyone says that I need it and they're all buying it. So I'm going to buy it. And you can get yourself into so much trouble doing that. Yeah. So yeah, stick, have the plan, <laughs> stick with the plan. Consistency is such, such a big word. Um, that's what we go through a lot when we talk about goal planning and planning for your future. You have to be able to have a consistent process that feels good to you so that you're more likely to follow it. Do it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know what? And so many people, oh, I've tried goal planning and, you know, it's just too hard for me. I can't think that far out. And then I don't know how to connect it back to what I'm doing now. And and that right there is the crux of it is it's not just setting the goal. It's also breaking down and like making yourself a roadmap to yeah. get there yep. so that you do know what to do tomorrow when you yep. jump onto the computer and next week. And then you're kind of checking in along the way, you know, and saying, oh, there's that goal that I set for, you know, six months from now. What have I done to get myself towards that? Right. And I think 
you know, you talking about like asking the hard questions, it's that whole like hold your hand and kick your butt. Yes. Right? <laughs> like the encouragement is super important because we, you know, all have a lot of fear. And I, um, last night, I was asked to speak on this like entrepreneurial panel and fill in for Yay. the lieutenant governor of Kentucky. Oh, wow. Because, right. And so I was like, okay, well, that's a big deal, right? <laughs> and then I get to the dinner that precedes the panel, and I realize the people I'm going to be on the panel with are the male CEO of Valvoline, which is a $5 billion company, and the male vice president of Smuckers managing Folgers and Jif and like these brands, and me. And like, I had no idea. And so I had, you know, I talked myself through it in the dinner. I'm like, this is great. I love panels. Like, it's going to be fun. But like, you know, if I didn't have that mindset, I would be like sweating in the bathroom, you know? Um, and so, <laughs> so I think it's hold your hand and kick your butt, like have the encouragement, know that, you know, you are where you are for a reason. And when those opportunities pop up, you take advantage of them because yep. you're, you're ready. And that was not something I planned for. It was really, really cool. But then also like, I think that everybody's in a different stage. And so if we try to follow someone else's advice, um, you know, on my on my group coaching call this week in my group program, I was able to say like, OK, for you and your particular goals, like it's really time for you to take action and stop talking mm -hmm. about your fears. Right. I understand that you have a lot of fears. We could spend an hour talking about them, but also it's time for you to take action. Right. And then somebody else is like, oh, no, let's dive into those fears because you haven't really processed through them yet. They're just coming up for you. And so recognizing where you are on the journey and having that encouragement and also that idea of what Darren Hardy says, um, only take advice from someone you trade places with. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Because. I don't need to know how to parent from somebody who's never parented. I know what kind of opinions I had about parenting before I had <laughs> kids. We all did. We're like, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. <laughs> right. Or like, how could they, whatever. Like if you think about it the same way uh, in, in business building, if you're talking to your accountability partner and they haven't gotten their first client yet, and you're asking them how to get your first client, yeah, it's yeah. like, I mean, forgive the expression, but it's like two stupids like trying to help each other out, right? You just don't know what you don't know. Yes. So third that the people you're listening to are people whose business you would love to have, whose life, whose family life with entrepreneurship you would love to have, and you learn that thing from them. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's that's huge. You know, so many people, you said that thing about the journey. It's it's people are at different points in their journey. And when you get in and the noise is so overwhelming, it's it's so hard to remember that. And you you really have to take a step back and say, that person is like five years ahead of me on their journey. So while what they're saying is amazing, maybe I have to find, you know, some of their older stuff or maybe look yeah, into yeah. their backstory and say, okay, does that resonate with me? Yep. And if it does, you can still follow that person. Like it's okay to follow people and listen to people that are years ahead of you, but it's just remembering that they're years ahead of you. So you can't mm -hmm. take everything they say to heart if you're in the beginning of your journey and they're, you know, in chapter five. Um, and, it's just remembering that as well about your peers when you're in the Facebook groups talking to people, when you join group programs or when you find a coach or whatever it may be, everyone is in a different point in their journey. So it's that comparisonitis, you know, don't compare yourself to everyone else because not only are they at different points in their journey, they also have different life situations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what we talk about a lot in our, in our community, the family entrepreneur life is, there are so many people out there doing this entrepreneur thing that don't have a spouse or that don't have kids. So of course their journey is going to look completely different to yours. And also their ideal lifestyle is probably going to look a little bit different yeah, than yours. You know, like sure. I'm not going to go traveling off around the world because I have two children and traveling with children is just not my idea of fun. Now, yes, I will take family vacations, love a vacation, but to be a digital nomad, as people would say, obviously not going to be in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. um, and same for other people out there with families. You know, it's, it's just 
it's different. You have different struggles, you have different responsibilities, and you you have probably most likely a different dream lifestyle that you're working towards. So it's just remember that. Remember the different points in the journey. Remember that people have the different life situations and make sure that what you're looking for and what what you're looking to do is going to fit in for your life. Yeah, I love that. And I have a real like tangible example of this. When when you're talking about like the people who are sort of, you know, marketing themselves as gurus or mm. like they're making a ton, a ton, a ton of money. And maybe like, that's why you're attracted to them are these like results that they're sharing. When I first started life with passion, I was a part of a program where the coach had scaled to a really big level very quickly. And she was sharing those strategies. And so that's what she taught but I was so new to coaching that I didn't realize that that wasn't the right um, strategy for me. Mm. It was what I was being taught. I wanted those results, of course. And so I attempted to scale way too fast without having some of the other pieces in place to make the most of that scaling. And so like, that's just me, you know, sharing a mistake, like, and being vulnerable with you all to say it happens. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important. And I'm super grateful to that coach because, you know, I wouldn't be where I was, where I am if I hadn't learned what I learned from her. But at the same time, I would have loved to also have the knowledge of like, if you're starting from ground zero, yes. maybe don't spend a ton of money on Facebook ads, maybe make sure you're dialed in in these other areas first and then scale something that's already working that you yes. started organically. You know, don't necessarily take the strategy that the six or seven figure coach said, this is the way I make $100,000 a month, right? Go, all right, what do I need to get my first and next clients? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, we fell into the same trap. We were like, oh yeah, let's make a digital course. And we went through and like shot the whole thing, did all the videos, made all the PDFs, and we went to sell it. and nothing zero sales and so many people online are like yeah i'm gonna make passive income by creating a digital program right. or course yes. and like no you have you to actually find people who want audience. to buy it yes you need to know what people want and yes. need and what yes. they're willing to pay you for before you go and spend all that time and money actually creating it um that's tom's jam he's he's huge on the whole idea validation portion mm -hmm. of like foundational business because he just gets so frustrated and so upset when you know people are like ready to give up because they've been trying to sell a digital course that they yeah. created for six months and nobody's buying yeah. it and they don't know why and then th they think the problem is them it's not it was the process that they followed you know exactly and it's the exactly. same with any business idea you know there's a lot of people out there selling a lot of things so it's just, you know, do the do the research when you're starting and, and do the work, put the work in to make sure that what you're actually spending your time and money on is going to be worth it for you so that you don't get to that point six months yeah. in and, and then be like, oh, well, why did I quit my job? Because entrepreneurship sucks. <laughs> yes. And you can still make money while you're doing that, right? Like you can yes. still serve people at a high level. You can serve them one on one and validate your idea for what's going to scale. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. We, we totally went around that the wrong way. Just so everyone knows we have made the mistake ourselves. So that is why we can talk about it so yeah. openly. So learn and I, yeah. And so many people out there don't share that part. You know, everyone likes those, those stories of I made six figures in six months. It wasn't six months. It could have been the last three years exactly. and they're just choosing to tell you it was started six months ago exactly. that they started building the six figure business. No, they spent the first two years making trying to figure out how zero. to make money and making none and being like, oh, and trying all things and doing, you know, going in all these different directions until they finally hit on that one thing that worked. And then six months later, sure, maybe they had six figures, but they're not telling you about those first couple of years. So, you know, take everything you hear with a grain of salt because that story just, oh, it irks me so much when those those ads and the things come up and everyone's like, look at my rags to riches story. And I'm right. like, if no. you really dig in though, you will always find that they were doing other things. They were yep. struggling before yep. they were, you know, testing, trying. And like, I think that, you know, the, I know you and I both believe, right? Like the fastest way to get those results is 
you know, to learn from somebody who's done it, right? To stop playing the business guessing game because that's what takes forever, yeah. right? It's sort of like you can take years and maybe, you know, eventually you will hit on something, you will figure it out. But if you want it to take less time, then it's the trade off is in another area, right? Then that means that you find somebody to invest your time and your resources with who's going to help you create a plan that works for you and hold your hand yeah. and kick your butt. And you get to choose because it's your journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, some people might want it faster so yeah. they can choose that journey. Other people might be OK with doing things on the side and trying things out and kind of doing it their own way for a little yeah. while. And that's OK, too. I mean, yeah. it's totally up to you. But just if you are one of those people who wants to do it fast, just realize it's going to take a lot more work and probably a bigger investment from you financially to be able to do it faster than everyone else. And, you know, then it's you, you kind of have to do the work of finding people who are being real and whose programs are going to actually get you results as opposed to a lot of the stuff that's just fluff out there. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So we, <laughs> I feel like I could talk to you forever. <laughs> I know. Me too. Before we wrap things up, I, we, you got through some huge, huge points and some major wisdom and gold nuggets on here. So I'm hoping everyone who watches the replay will be able to catch all of those. Um, but what is um, one piece of advice or one lesson learned that you want to share with all of our watchers today? Mm. I think we've covered a lot of the big ones, right? <laughs> like, which is so great. But I really feel that I also want you to know that it's possible um, and that it doesn't have to require the sacrifice of everything else in your life. You know, I <clears throat> started life with passion while I was grieving the loss of Maeve and have built it to six figures while being pregnant and being very sick, plus the anxiety of going through another pregnancy and raising a baby. Like that's been my journey, grief and then, you know, pregnancy <laughs> after loss and raising a baby all while building this business baby. And so while we talk about it being like, yes, of course it's work, but also you've probably already done and have been through and have survived things that are going to be harder than building this business yes. will be for you. And so it requires you showing up. It requires you dealing with your stuff on a daily <laughs> basis, which if you love personal development is awesome, you know, um, and can be frustrating at times, right? And you keep being like, really? I'm just still dealing with this thing? Like I'm still <laughs> dealing with perfectionism, whatever. But yeah, it's okay. And it's also a really good way to learn and become your best self. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't require you to throw everything else out the window. It just requires you to like be willing and open to do something for five minutes today instead of just talking about it. Like that's the biggest, that's the biggest way to get where you want to be. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And um, so obviously, <clears throat> Christine works with mainly women, but for anyone watching, obviously everything we talked about applies to the guys out there. So, you know, don't don't think you can shirk all the things we said just because <laughs> we were talking from a woman's point of view. It's important for you too. Um, but Christine, where can women find you or people who want to send some women your way find you? Sure. Yeah, totally everything that I say applies to guys <laughs> too. Like, I hate to leave them out. Sorry, guys, but <laughs> no, it to absolutely. You. Um, I have a workbook for how to get your first or next client that you can get at lifewithpassion.com slash family. Yeah. And that walks you through the top five ways that I see um, you can focus on right now and kind of identify like which one you want to choose to spend five minutes a day on um, today. And so you can get that at lifewithpassion.com slash family, get your first or next client. Obviously my website is lifewithpassion.com and I have a Facebook group for women called the Passionate and Profitable Entrepreneur Society that you're so welcome to join. Also, always welcome to email me. I love connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, and my email is christine at lifewithpassion.com. 
Yay! And we will, of course, jump in a little bit later and post all of those links below for anyone who doesn't want to have to like listen and try typing. Yeah. Um, and also, thank you guys all for watching today. I, I hope you guys got a ton out of this interview. Go and find Christine. If you've got questions, feel free to post them up here and tag yeah. Christine. Yep. Um, and if you aren't a part of our fabulous community yet, it is uh, Family Entrepreneur Life. You can find that at Family Entrepreneur Life com, And we welcome all entrepreneurs that are family focused and, and really building the business to support their family lifestyle. So Christine, thank you so much for coming on. I had a great time today. It's like made my Friday. My birthday weekend started off with a bang. Yay, happy birthday. Thank, <laughs> thank you for you. sharing your birthday weekend with me. All right. And Joanne, thank you so much for watching with us and posting comments. Um, it was so nice to have your perspective with us while we were on the show. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope you all have a lovely Friday. Bye. Bye.